In 1975, I was developing electronic warfare systems at the Aeronautical Systems Division at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. Britain's renowned World War II expert on radar and electronic warfare, Reginald V. Jones, was coming to the National Museum of the United States Air Force at Wright-Patterson to give a talk, and I was assigned to go to the airport, meet him, give him a good lunch, and get him to the museum in time for his talk. We had a spare hour before his first appointment, so we went to the officers' club and sat down for a leisurely lunch. R.V. Jones was a fascinating luncheon companion. We first talked about the development of radar, electronic warfare, chaff, deceptive jamming, and then he commented, Did you know that Americans built a V-1 buzz bomb? No, I didn't. So he told me the story. The V-1 was a flying bomb powered by a pulse jet engine. It would fly on a given heading for a given amount of time and then dive on its target, detonating its 1,800-pound warhead. The Germans launched over 9,500 V-1s in England, sometimes over 100 a day, and caused over 22,000 casualties. The British Spitfire fighter could catch the V-1 and shoot them down, but sometimes the V-1 would explode with such force that it would destroy the fighter that was shooting at it. The British pilots discovered that they flew underneath the V-1's wing and flipped it with their wing, the V-1 would go out of control and crash without damaging the British fighter. Several V-1s crashed without exploding, and the British got a good chance to look at how they were designed. The British had an idea. If they could get America to reverse engineer and build V-1s, the British could shoot them back at Germany. The cover story would be that the British had learned how to turn the V-1s around and send them back in the direction that they had come. If the Germans saw their own V-1s coming back at them frequently, they would stop firing them at England. The British sent the captured V-1s back to America, where the Ford Company reverse-engineered and built the American version of the V-1 and began test-firing them out from Florida over the Gulf of Mexico. The British started their propaganda campaign showing Spitfires tipping, turning the V-1s and heading them back the direction they came from. The main trouble was that the American V-1s would not fly. They failed test after test and were not ready to fire at the Germans. Specifications called for the American-made V-1 to look like the German V-1 on the outside, but the inside could have American-made parts. That was successful. The V-1 on display at the Air Force Museum at Wright-Patterson today looks just like the German V-1, but if you look at the data plate carefully, it was made by the Ford Motor Company. This was the American V-1. World War II ended before the American V-1s were ready, but development continued with the JB-2 Loon, which the Navy fired off of submarines. Thus, the V-1 was the beginning of the American cruise missile program.